Renee Filipponi is following the events unfolding here in Abbotsford. I know you're looking at water levels and I know you remember yesterday that road was covered. There was a car that was stuck in the water. Very different today. Absolutely. And that's good news. But there are concerns about the stability of the roads and the bridges which are being assessed. The next step would be to open those floodgates. And by doing that, some of that water sitting on the Sumas Prairie would be able to get out of the region. But that can't happen until the Fraser River water level drops below the level of the other major river here, the Sumas River. And officials are hoping that will happen in the next 24 to 36 hours. The scope of the damage is shocking, and still, this is an improvement over last night when residents scrambled to safety. Water was rising around Jordan Nyangama after he was unable to evacuate. This is unbelievable. I was planning to leave. It happened so quick, you know, just a complete snap of the fingers. He called 911 and spent part of the night on the roof waiting for help. 3.30 a.m., I was, uh, you know, still, still awake and still... So still coherence and I just I heard a little motor putting down the putting down I don't know probably about 500 meters away. Rescue crews had finally arrived. The water was up to my window like seven feet from the ground and I just flashed my flashlight. In other words I thought I would see a, a boat float by my bedroom window. Overnight officials warned of a catastrophic disaster if a pumping station were to fail and send a deluge of water into an already heavily flooded area. Volunteers worked through the night to build a dam. And I just saw this random post on this page of people saying, hey, bring a shovel, come down to the pump station and, uh, and help out. It was just cool because everybody was just like down to work. It's holding for now. This is still a dynamic situation. Uh, we're still monitoring the river levels very closely. We know that this is not over and uh, this can change very quickly. Compounding this emergency was a massive fire at an RV dealership, which raised concerns about toxic smoke. Much of today's rescue effort was focused on the animals. This is an agricultural hub in BC. There are 45,000 dairy cows alone in the Fraser Valley. This farmer says officials at the evacuation roadblocks have prevented them from getting to the barns. There's thousands of cows locked in barns screaming. The water's been cut off. There's thousands of cows without water and crews need to get in. People need to get in to help. Thousands of animals have already died and many more will be euthanized. The agriculture minister says farmers are painting a grim scene. Some of their barns are flooded and you can see the animals that are deceased and it's heartbreaking. All this at a time when the region is essentially cut off from the rest of the country and holding its breath that the pumps will hold. And Ian, everyone we've run into today from grocery stores to cafes, this is all they're talking about. This has really hit people to the core and it's really brought the community together. 300 volunteers came out last night to build that dam. Restaurants are giving out free meals to evacuees. We've spoken with individuals who are collecting donations, all trying to ease some of the suffering of those people who've lost so much. All right, Ian? Renee, thank you very much.